Hi, my name is Sheroz Ahmed and uh, in this video we are going to discuss the topic of probability of uh, IB math standard level. So starting off with probability, let's see what is the probability of an event. So consider an event for which we have to work out its probability. So let's suppose the event is rolling a dice. So there is a dice and uh, we roll the dice so we the total outcomes of this event could be six because there are six numbers written on the dice and we want that um, either two can come or three can come so the the outcomes that we want they are the uh, possible outcomes and the total outcomes that can come onto that dice they will be considered as the total outcomes so if we have to find out the probability of this event of rolling a dice then we will say our probability will be equal to the possible outcomes divided by the total outcomes total outcomes so the total outcomes for this dice will be six and the possible outcomes we want number two and three so the possible outcomes of, of this uh, event will be two so the probability for this will become 2 divided by 6. 2 are the possible outcomes like this. This is one possible outcome. This is another possible outcome. And the total outcomes are 6. So the answer will be equal to 1 over 3. So this is how we can work out the probability of any event. The possible outcomes divided by the total outcomes. Now let's see the next thing. Complementary events. Alright, so the complementary events are basically the opposite events. Let's suppose if I say the probability that it will rain today is 0 0.2, then the probability that it will not rain today will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.2, that will be equal to 0 0.8. So the probability, and all the sum of all the probabilities in an event will be equal to 1. So this is the probability of a rain, and this is the probability of not rain. Okay, so we will say that. Uh, in order to write that in, in the form of a formula, we can say the, prob the probability of an event A plus the probability that the event will not happen. I'll write it as A dash. The sum of these two probabilities will be equal to 1. Now let's see another example. For example, we roll a dice. And uh, when we roll a dice, there are six numbers on the dice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the probability that 1 will come is 1 over 6 and the probability that 1 will not come it will be equal to 1 minus 1 over 6. Same goes for 2, same goes for 3, 4, 5 and 6. And if we want to find out the total, the sum of all the probabilities of the numbers that will be equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. We'll add it up for 6 times and the answer will be equal to 6 over 6 that will be equal to 1. So the sum of probabilities of all the events will be equal to 1 and uh, the probability of an event, the probability that an event will happen, let's suppose it is 1 over 6, so the probability that the event will not happen, that would be 1 minus 1 over 6. So such events are called the complementary events and such probabilities are called the um, complementary probabilities. So this is it for the complementary events. Now let's discuss the combined events all right so in order to discuss for the combined events i'm going to draw a venn diagram in this venn diagram let's suppose two events are taking place event a and event b this is event a and this is event b all right so here we have event a and event b so let's suppose the probability of event a is 0 0.3 the probability of event b is um, 0.5 and the probability that both events will happen is 0.2 so if you want to if you want to write down the combined probability of event a and b we will represent it with probability of a union b this one we'll write it as probability of uh, a union b so I'll write it as um, probability of 
A union B. It means this whole shaded region. Now, if we have to represent the probability of only the common region, which is this one. So we'll write it as probability of A intersection B. If you want to write down the probability of A, so that would be equal to this circle. That would be equal to 0 0.5. If you want to find out the probability of uh, even B, it will be this one. So that would be equal to 0 0.7. Now the formula that relates these probabilities, these combined events will be like this. Probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A union B. All right. So this is the formula that will relate these combined events. Now there are two types of events, mutually exclusive events and mutually not exclusive events. So these events are not mutually exclusive because there's an overlapping region between them. So whenever there is no common region in, in between them, then such events are called the mutually exclusive events. So for the mutually exclusive events, let me just draw the Venn diagram. So it's Venn di diagram will look like this. This is event A and this is event B and there's nothing common in, in between them. So for the mutually exclusive events, the probability of A intersection, this is A intersection, the probability of A intersection B will be equal to zero. So such events will be called the mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events. Okay, so that's the difference that you have to keep in mind while discussing the uh, non mutually exclusive events and the mutually exclusive events. Now after this concept, we have to discuss the concept of uh, conditional probability. All right, so in order to discuss the conditional probability, let's uh, let's assume this Venn diagram where there are two events. They are not mutually exclusive events because uh, there's some overlapping portion over here. And if you have to write down the conditional probability, let me just write down the symbol first. So the if I have to find out the conditional probability of A given that B. Now, what does it mean? It means that we have to find out the probability of A within the event within the event of probability b so our total outcomes will be this region this will be our total probability and within this probability we have to see what is our what is the probability of event a so we will write it as like this probability of a intersection b divided by the probability of b so as you can see here, the overlapping region is the overlapping region is 0 0.2. So the probability of the overlapping region is 0 0.2 and the probability of B is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5. That will be equal to 0 0.7. So this is the probability of A given B. Now, when we'll solve it, we'll get the answer equal to 2 over 7. So 2 over 7 is the probability of event A given B. Now let's find out the probability of P given A. Now for this one, the numerator will remain same, but the denom denominator will become probability of B. Sorry, probability of A. So now the total probability will be this much. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2. So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2, that would be equal to 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.2 over 0 0.5. So the answer will be equal to 2 over 5. So 2 over 5 will be the conditional probability for event B given that event A. So this is how we find out the conditional probability. Now, there's another concept that is related to, to the conditional probability and that concept is of the dependent events and the independent events. So let me just tell you the conditions for the dependent events and the independent events. All right, so an event is considered to be a dependent event if, okay, so two, uh, two events will be considered as the dependent events if the probability, if the happening of one event affects the probability of the other event. 
and two independent two events will be considered as independent if the happening of one event does not affect the happening of another event so the condition that we use for the dependent event is probability of a intersection b is equal to the probability of a times the probability of b given a if this condition occurs then we will call such events to be the dependent events and the condition for the independent events will be probability of a intersection b is equal to the probability of a times the probability of b so two events will be considered as independent if the product of their probabilities is equal to um, the probability of a intersection b and the two events will be considered as dependent if the probability of a times the probability of b given a is equal to the probability of a intersection b so these are the two conditions for the independent and dependent events so you have to keep that in mind while doing the questions and uh, this is it for the concept part now let's move on to some exam related questions all right so this is the question and it's an exam related question of uh, easier easy difficulty level so the question it says uh, the following Venn diagram shows two events a and b where probability of event a is 0 0.3 and uh, the probability of a intersection b is 0 0.2 probability of a union b is 0 0.7 and the values of p q r and st are the probabilities okay so write down the value of r so let's fill it up so the value of r basically over here they are overlapping so the overlapping probabilities are represented by probability of a intersection b so r will be equal to 0 0.2 find the value of p q and s so the probability of a is 0 0.3 so r is 0 0.2 so the remaining will be 0 0.1 over here this is 0 0.2 because the total probability of a is 0 0.3 so 0 0.2 will be here and 0 0.1 will be here so the value of p will be equal to 0 0.1 now we have to work out the value of q so that um, okay p probability of a intersection b is uh, 0 0.2 and probability of a union b is 0 0.7 so a union b is basically the probabilities of this whole thing a and b so it's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus something that could make it 0 0.7 so the probability of q will be equal to 0 0.4 so when we add these three probabilities our answer will be equal to 0 0.7 so the probability of q is 0 0.7 now let's see the probability of s so the probability of a union b is 0 0.7 so the remaining probability will be the probability of s so the as we know that the total probability is 1 so 1 minus 0 0.7 will give us the value of s so that would be equal to 0 0.3 so the probability of s will be equal to 0 0.3 now we have to work out the probability of b so probability of b will be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 so the probability of b will become equal to 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 that would be equal to 0 0.6 so that was quite easy you just have to manage the probabilities in this one diagram now let's move on to some other question all right so let's see this question in this question it says uh, there are 40 players in a clay pigeon shooting club who take part in local tournament the scores obtained after the first round of shootings are shown in the following table this is a table these are the scores and uh, this is the frequency frequency means that zero has been scored two times one has been scored seven times two has been scored 12 times three four ten times four four six times and five four three times okay and in a part it says one of the player is chosen at random find the probability that this player's score was three or more okay so we'll just use the basic formula of probability that says the probability is equal to the possible outcomes over total outcomes so first of all let's find out the total outcomes so the total outcomes will be the sum of these frequencies so it's 2 plus 7 plus 12 plus 10 plus 6 plus 3 so when we'll add them we'll get 40 and now we have to find out our possible outcomes so the total outcomes are 40 now let's see the possible outcomes so the possible outcomes are three or more so we will choose this this and this so 10 plus 6 plus 3 so 10 plus 6 is 16 16 plus 3 is 19 so the probability will become equal to 19 over 40 
so if we write that into decimal it will become equal to 0 0.475 so that's the probability of a player score three or more okay three four and five so you'll just add the frequencies you'll get the possible outcomes now in the next part it says calculate the mean score so mean score is quite simple you just multiply the score with the frequency and uh, then add it up and then divide it by the total frequency so in order to do that we have to this is a 0 0.475 so for the mean it's 0 times 2 plus 1 times 7 plus 2 times 12 plus 3 times 10 plus 4 times 6 plus 5 times 3 and we'll divide it by 40 so this is how we'll get the mean score let me just put that into the calculator and our mean score will be 2.5 so the mean score will be equal to 2.5 so 2.5 is the answer so it was comparatively easy question so now let's move on to some to some question of medium difficulty all right so here we have a question it says bag a contains four red balls and three green balls bag b contains four red balls and one green ball a ball is randomly chosen from both bags find the probability that they are of different colors so we have to work out the probability that um, the balls will have the different so our required probability will become equal to the probability of uh, red ball from bag a times the probability of green ball from bag b okay so we have chosen different balls from each bag so this is the possibility this is one possibility there's another possibility that would be green bag green uh, ball from the bag a so it will be like probability of green from a i'll write it over here a and the red ball from bag b so probability of red from bag b this was the probability of red from bag a and probability of green from bag b so these are the two possibilities that we will get the balls of different colors now we have to work out the probability of red from bag a that will be equal to possible outcomes over total outcomes so the possible outcomes are four and the total outcomes are seven so that would be four over seven times the probability of uh, green ball from bag b that would be equal to possible outcomes that is one and the total outcomes are five so that would be equal to one over five plus probability of green ball from bag a so there are three green balls in bag a so its probability will become three over seven and the probability of red ball from bag b so that would be four over five so either this can happen or this can happen so for or we will use addition sign and for must con condition we will multiply the probabilities okay so that's why we have multiplied these probabilities because we wanted different colors from each bag and uh, this plus symbol is representing or that um, either this event can happen or this event can happen so we can we can just combine the probabilities of both the events so i'll just put that into the calculator and my final answer will become equal to well this will become 4 over 35 plus um, 12 over 35 so when we'll add them we will get 16 over 35 so 16 over 35 is the probability of getting different colors from each pack okay now let's move on to part b so in part b it says a bias coin is flipped if head is shown a ball is randomly selected from bag a if tail is shown a ball is randomly selected from bag b okay so we have to complete this tree diagram all right so let's complete this tree diagram so the probability of head is 2 over 3 so the probability of tail will be equal to 1 minus 2 over 3 that would be equal to 1 over 3 so it will be 1 over 3 now when head comes um, it says if head is shown a ball is randomly chosen from bag a so this is the pro these will be the probabilities for bag a and if there is tail then these are the probabilities for bag b okay 
so the probability of red given that it's back a so that would be equal to 4 over 7 so it'll be 4 over 7 probability of green given that it's back a so it'll be 3 over 7 okay now in for back b if tail comes then the probability of red will be 4 over 5 and the probability of green will be equal to 1 over 5 so this is how we'll complete our tree diagram all right so part c in part c it says the bias coin is flipped and a ball is randomly selected find the probability that the ball is red so we have to work out the probability that the ball is red so in order to get the red either we can go into this branch or we can get the red from here so this branch so in order to find out the probability we will add uh, we will multiply these two probabilities we will multiply these two probabilities and then we will add them okay so we'll get red we'll get red when head comes and we choose the red red ball from back a so that would be 2 over 3 times 4 over 7 so this is the condition this is the probability for this condition head with red and then tail with red the probability will be 1 over 3 times 4 over 5 and we will add them because both of these probabilities will give us a red color so i'll just solve it and it will get it will be equal to 8 over 21 plus 4 over 15. so its answer will be equal to 68 over 105 so that's the answer all right so now let's see the next one in the next one it says um, given that a red ball is selected find the probability the bias coin showed heads okay so for part d it says given that a red ball is selected find the probability that the bias coin showed heads so we have to find out the probability of head given that red color was selected so for this one it will be equal to so it will be equal to the probability of head times the probability of red given head divided by the probability of r so we know the probability of head that is 2 over 3 the probability of r um, that is uh, 4 over 7 and the probability of r given head so let's find out this probability probability of r given head so that would be equal to so the probability of r given head is 4 over 7 and the probability of head is 2 over 3 so it will be like 2 over 3 times 4 over 7 whole divided by the probability of red that was um, 68 over 105 so once you put that into the calculator we'll get the answer equal 10 over 17 so 10 over 17 is the answer for this probability so this is how we will deal with the questions for the conditional probabilities now let's do a hard difficulty level question all right so in this question it's a hard level question it says a bag contains n marbles two of which are green claudia plays a game in which she randomly draws marble out of the bag one after another without replacement without re replacement means if she took one marble then she won't uh, put it back into the bag so if there are n marbles and she took one marble the remaining marbles would be n minus one if she if she took two marbles the remaining marbles would be n minus two the game ends when claudia draws a green marble so when she draws the green marble at that time the game will end now we have to find out the probability in terms of n that the game will end on her first draw and on the second draw so before doing that we will write down the number of uh, uh, green marbles and the other marbles so the green marbles are 2 and the other marbles are n minus 2 and the total are n okay so the game will finish when green marble will come and the game will not finish when any other marble will come so let's suppose the game finishes in the first draw it means that she took the green marble so the probability will be equal to 2 that are the possible outcomes and they are the uh, total outcomes so that will be 2 over n now the game will finish in the second draw it means that in the first draw she will take other marble other marble than green so the probability for that one will be equal to n minus 2 over n 
this is the probability for the other marble and then she will take the green marble in the second draw so that would be equal to 2 over now because this event is without replacement so the total outcomes will be um, one less so it'll be 2 over n minus 1 so the probability will become equal to 2 times n minus 2 divided by n minus 1 n times n minus 1 so this will be the probability that the game will end in the second draw okay now in part b it says given that n is equal to 6 find the probability that the game will end on her third draw okay on the third draw it means on the first draw it will be n minus 2 over n second draw will also be some other marble it won't be green so that would be n minus 3 over n minus 1 because uh, the other marbles will be one less and the total outcomes will also be one less so this is the first draw this is the second draw and the third draw will be green so that will be 2 over n minus 2 so this is how you can work out the probability this n minus 2 n minus 2 will get cancelled and we'll just put the value of uh, 6 over here n equals to 6 so it will become equal to 1 over 6 times 6 minus 3 that would be 3 over 6 minus 1 that is uh, 5 times 2 so once we'll solve it we will get the answer equals over 30 so it will be like 6 over 30 that will be equal to 1 over 5 so the probability will be equal to 1 over 5 that the game will finish on the third draw all right now the next one it says the game will finish on the fifth draw so this is the expression for the for the game to be finished on the third draw now we have to finish it in the fifth draw so this is the first draw this is the second draw now the third draw will be n minus 4 over n minus 2 the fourth draw will be equal to n minus 5 over n minus 3 and the fifth draw will be green so that would be 2 over n minus 4 so n minus 2 will get cancelled with this n minus 3 will get cancelled with this n minus 4 will get cancelled with this now we'll just insert the value of n equals to 6 so that we will get 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 minus 1 that will be equal to 5 times this is nothing over here so I'll just put it 1 times 6 minus 5 that is also 1 times 2 over 1 that is only 2 so that would be equal to 2 over 30 which is equal to 1 over 15 so 1 over 15 is the answer that the game will finish on the fifth draw all right so now i'll just erase this whole working and uh, let's see the next part it says claudia plays the game when n equals to six she plays 11 uh, she pays 11 dollars to play and can earn money back depending on the number of draws it takes to obtain a green marble she earns no money back if she obtain a green marble on her fifth draw uh, let m be the amount of money that she earns back playing the game this information is shown in the table so this information has been shown in the table and she has paid eleven dollars and she want to like earn some extra money by paying eleven dollars so find the value of k so that this is a fair game okay we have to work out the value of k so that this is a fair game which means um, that if she is spending eleven dollars then the chance of winning eleven dollars will be also the same the chance of uh, losing eleven okay uh, let's suppose the chance of losing is eleven dollars then the chance of winning should be equal to eleven dollars so for that purpose we have to work out the in order in order for the game to be fair so the expected money earned back should be equal to eleven dollars so what we have to do is we have to find out the expected um, uh, expected value from this information so from this number of draws we can work out the probabilities and this is the earn uh, money earned back all right so the sum of them is equal to 15 now the maximum probability will be for uh, this event and the minimum probability will be for this event so it will be like 1 over 15 this will be 2 over 15 this will be 3 over 15 
that will be 4 over 15 and the last one will be equal to 5 over 15 so these are the probabilities of uh, these draws now what we do is we'll just multiply the earned money back with these probabilities and put it equal to 11 dollars and from there we'll work out the value of k so it's like 5 over 15 times 15 plus 4 over 15 times 4k plus 3 over 15 times 10 plus 2 over 15 times 2k plus 1 over 15 times 0 equals to 11 now I'll just cancel it out so this will become 5 plus 4 times 4 is 16 k over 15 and uh, this will become 3 times 10 is 30 30 over 15 is 2 plus 2 times 2 is 4k so 4k over 15 plus 0 equals to 11 so 16k plus 4k that would be equal to 20k over 15 plus 7 like 5 plus 2 is 7 equals to 11 so that uh, 20k over 15 will become equal to 11 minus 7 that would be equal to 4 so 20k over 15 will be equal to 4 and from here we'll get the value of 20k equals to 15 times 4 that would be equal to 60 so that k will become equal to 60 over 20 so that our final answer for k is equal to 3 so in order for this game to be fair the value of k should be equal to 3 so this is it for this topic and uh, i hope you got the concepts thanks a lot for watching this video thank you